You've been doing UCAT work for a while now, but still feel like you ain't been making any proper traction in anything. My name is Mohammed Mo thinks. Welcome to the channel. I'm a fourth year medical student and here's everything you need to know in order to prepare for the UCAT exam. I'll be honest, the UCAT is a complex exam. It's nothing like the normal exams that you've encountered in your life. It's a whole new ball game. It's got its own way to learn and it's got its own way in getting better at it. So what we're going to do is break up each of the sections of the UCA and talk about what do people usually do wrong in this and how can you actually improve in each one of these sections. So first and foremost, and let's start off with verbal reasoning. Two important things when it comes to verbal reasoning. First and foremost, a lot of people tend to ignore the negations in the sentences. So the things like the nots, you tend to ignore them and that just makes you go into the complete wrong answer. The second thing, making assumptions. Don't make any assumptions when it comes to verbal reasoning in your UCAT exam. If the UCAT text in the VR section is telling you that the sky is green, yes, the sky is green. So those are the two things that people tend to do wrong. But here's a couple of tips when it comes to verbal reasoning. First and foremost, don't be too afraid of verbal reasoning. It's something that people tend to do worse on. It's a known fact. So don't kill yourself if you're not doing that well on it. Second of all, don't use any outside knowledge. Don't use anything else that they've told that you think you might know. Just use exactly what's been told to you in the exam. If you've not been told something, don't assume it. Another thing just to save time, another tip, read the question before you read the text so that you know what you're looking for. That way you actually can do two jobs at once. Be scanning, skimming, just seeing what you want to actually find out. And second of all, you are still literally reading through the passage, but now you know what you're looking for. Let's move on to the next section, quantitative reasoning. I think the biggest mistake that people tend to make, other than just not reading the question, people just are too slow with this. And the main way that I think people need to get better at it is just using the calculator. I know this is something that a lot of people tend to say don't use the on-screen calculator but if you're able to truly master that keypad on your right hand side of the keyboard and know how to use a calculator it's literally going to be the thing that saves you what i'd recommend people use this website www.tenkytest.com and eventually if you practice 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 using that keypad kind of being a little bit of a sweat i'll be honest but it's trust me it's going to revolutionize things you'll be able to do your calculations just like that just by typing away you know mentally what calculations you want to make that's the important bit but also getting those answers just quickly using that calculator is what's going to save you really in my opinion and then the other tip learn your mental maths here's a bunch of things that you just have to have memorized for the exam but yeah just know your mental maths know your time table up to about 17 18 19 if you can really push it as well but yeah that's quantitative reasoning for you next section let's move on to decision making then so when it comes to decision making the main thing that people tend to get wrong is not understanding the words for example if something mentions all that doesn't really relate to some and if something mentions 30 percent, that doesn't necessarily relate to some people if, if if that makes sense hopefully if you've done your revision you'll know that for certain words they mean certain things they represent certain groups of people so for example all will represent all 100 percent most will represent something like, I don't know, was it 50% or above? Something like that. But these sort of things, you just have to know. But what are my tips when it comes to this section? This is where I find my whiteboard being most useful because there's a lot of diagrams and a lot of stuff just going on. So being able to just draw them out was really helpful. Second and third of all, really just practice seeing all the different possible questions that they can ask you so that when it comes to the exam when you see that specific type of question you know exactly the type of method that you want to use to try and answer that question it really is just practice 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 and then moving on to abstract reasoning then what people tend to do wrong really is having not practiced enough to be honest what i did i tried to track all the different patterns i'd recognized and just basically took taking an order and actively tried to understand what the different patterns were my first tip you're going to have about a minute between the decision making and abstract reasoning section my main advice write out this whole acronym i'll put it on the screen but literally just write it out onto your whiteboard then so that you're able to see it and actually go through it when you're doing each question and yeah just more practice when it comes to abstract reasoning because it's once again getting used to the patterns second of all getting used to the time constraints as well last but certainly not least situational judgment really it's not the worst one i'll be honest the main way of me putting how to do well in situational judgment just imagine being the biggest neek the biggest teacher's pet the biggest goody goody two shoes that is literally the mindset or the mind frame that you have to be in when you're answering these situational judgment questions. And yes, I do, as the good medical practice does say, I do abide by everything that's mentioned there, as the GMT does say. That's another thing I'd recommend you guys all to read the good medical practice, as well as, as a bare minimum, know the four um, pillars of medical ethics as well. That's my first tip. Second of all, when it comes to those appropriate and inappropriate questions, the main thing, are you able to at least classify it as appropriate? or inappropriate that will get you half the marks you get half marks in situation judgment and then 
whether you're able to use strongly or whatever the other word, then that's going to get you the second half of the mark. But the main thing, are you able to then say first, is it appropriate or inappropriate? So what side are you on? And then are you able to narrow it down? And something that I did personally, it's not something that you have to do, but I also kept a note of all the different scenarios that I encountered, especially the one more kind of rogue and vague ones, to be honest, because there's some that are kind of, hmm, I don't know why I'd actually do in this situation. So those are the ones that I kind of kept note of. But yeah, those are my tips when it comes to VCAT. Hopefully this has helped. And um, if it has, keep an eye on the next few videos. There's going to be a lot more coming out for the UCAT. And let me know in the comments how you're feeling for it as well. If you guys have enjoyed it, once again, like, comment, share, subscribe. Turn on the push notifications button so you never miss an on another video. And I'll catch you on in the next one, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.